Okay, and now I have switched from the languages and hello, Christina and hello, Robert. It's so nice to see you. When we started this con uh, conference, we were conversing about how four and a half years ago in the same setting, we were talking about the same topic, participatory budgeting, and you as experts were sharing your experience and encouraging us to start something like that here. And we were thinking about how much has happened in four years and that now we actually have participatory budgeting in the new municipal law. And from 2025, all municipalities in Latvia are gonna have that. So that's quite a development in four years. So I'm very happy to have you both here. Uh, also, the participants are very eager to hear more, what you have to tell. And for the next 50, 55 minutes, we are gonna have a discussion with you. As I introduced you in the beginning, I'm gonna do that now as well. And for everyone listening today, we are joined by two amazing experts that we have a possibility to work in this project with others as well. And I'm gonna start with Christina. Christina Reinsalu is from Estonia. Christina works as the program director of e-democracy at, e at e-governance academy. Uh, for everyone from municipalities, we also encourage you to just learn more about e-governance academy. You might find many useful things and many, many possible connections there. So feel free to learn more about them. And Robert, Robert Bjarnason, I hope I pronounced it correctly, is from Iceland. Robert is president and co-founder of the Citizens Foundation of Iceland. And without any further ado, I'm happy to give the floor. And uh, I think let's start with uh, Christina, as Estonia is a bit closer to us. Let's learn about country a bit more similar to ours and then we will give floor to Robert. So, Christina, floor is yours. Again, happy to see you here. Hello, everybody. I start sharing my screen. Now you should be seeing it. Can you, yeah, can you see it now? I just need to put it on the full screen. Yes. Yeah, now it is, right. Okay. It's my pleasure and honor to be with you today virtually. And I just need to excuse that background noise might be a bit big because I'm in a, in a coastline and it's very stormy outside. I just hope that my, my balcony is, is not flying away, but, but let's hope so. So yeah, once again, it's, it's my pleasure to share my experiences uh, from Estonian uh, municipalities and Estonian e-governance academy was kind of really tried to be a lighthouse for Estonian municipalities in terms of participatory budgeting and we have really quite extensive um, experience but just few words about myself because it gives you also the context so uh, I'm head of uh, a program of e-democracy at e-governance academy but my background is media and communication. So whenever I consult municipalities, I really have this and try to, to make also help municipalities to have a citizen perspective and citizen view to put them, so to say, in citizen shoes. And really, uh, whenever we, we consult in, in terms of civic engagement, and, and I'm also pointing it out that I'm resident of Tartu municipality, which is not even Tartu city, but it's a municipality surrounding. Why so? I try to do as many things with my home municipality also, because this is really perfect test ground, because this is one of the fastest growing property areas in Estonia. And you can already assume how many challenges in terms of uh, civic engagement it creates and in terms of urban planning. So this is just, just the background. And now going to the topic. So I just, I will be very, very brief because I know the time limits and, but I just try to be, try to be as practical as, as possible for you, for municipality people. But at the same time, of course, I try to be as general as possible, really generalizing says Estonian uh, lessons learned, why, when, and how we started, uh, where we are now. I'm focusing on one showcase because start to city participatory budgeting was, was still kind of pilot project for us and, and just 
describing and and based on this case study I just analyzed some some major things and lessons learned and what are still our big challenges and how is our organization how we, we do support municipalities in doing better better civic engagement generally but also participatory budgeting so we started in Estonia with participatory budgeting in 2011 already. I mean, the first thing was really in, in Estonian e-governance academy, we discovered that, well, there was certain momentum in Estonia where municipalities were declaring in all their election programs, in other strategic documents, that they are more open and, and say, so want to be more engaging and, and so, but, but it stayed at a very abstract level. So once realizing and, and, and knowing that there is a really cute participatory model uh, in the world as, as, as participatory budgeting, we understood that this might be very cute practical learning by doing exercise for municipalities. Because, well, we all know citizens do care about money and do care about public space, what is happening around us. So there is already guaranteed quite big motivation, we assumed that, and we were right. And of course, one of our main, uh, main aims with this process was really not about selecting one concrete object each year in each, each municipality. It was really rather to, to activate communities to make citizens also understanding what is their responsibility and possibilities to be also saying their word. And of course, Concretely, when we started to pilot participatory budgeting, we also wanted eagerly to have those. We knew that there are very good ideas, many good ideas, out of box ideas in 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 heads of of uh, citizens. We just want to get them out, and we saw this process also to be one of the possibilities. So generally, uh, where we are now with participatory budgeting in Estonia, uh, that you can see the trends that, that, that there are the green color uh, symbolizes uh, uh, the number of municipalities which are implementing already participatory budgeting. So you see the the trend is growing. There are more and more municipalities which are which are doing this without being this regulated with law. So I just want to emphasize that. We, we haven't, this is still voluntary, voluntary, uh, voluntary process. And I think that this graph also shows that, well, there is no, no need even to regulate it because municipalities still have found the, 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 the beauty of this process. In terms of time and money, most of the, the municipalities, I mean, the biggest number of municipalities distribute money between 11,000 to, to 50,000, but there are, talk to city by now, uh, for instance, uh, distributes this way 200,000 uh, euros per year. So there are different, different possibilities. And also most of the municipalities implemented by now, uh, well, between two and five years. Which is good thing that many municipalities started it uh, to implement participatory budgeting just before COVID started, but they haven't stopped. And, and even in terms of money, it hasn't uh, become less. So this is good thing. And uh, now I promise that, 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 that few more words about this particular our, our, our pilot project and which is not, of course, uh, which, which also showed the kind of light to the rest of municipalities and which created kind of good role model for other municipalities is, is start to city. We started 2013. So since then, start to city implements this. And we were very happy with my organization really having three hands to, to kind of design this model, extra model for Dr. City, but also later on, we knew that most of the Estonian and other municipalities have followed the same model. So we really considering the context, considering the expectations of Tartu citizens, the readiness of, of, of uh, civil society there, we considered all those factors, 
we set the aim, which from the city was that uh, that should be the money is coming from uh, from uh, investment budget, so it should be about concrete, tangible object uh, uh, accessible 20, for 24 hours for everybody in public city space. And then we set already the rules together with 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 city lawyers, so that that uh, how many votes who can vote there are only registered citizens so of of that you can vote but anybody can can propose ideas we also decided which platform the platform we use is is estonian election um, Estonian municipality electoral system system platform which enables secure uh, identification and 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 then commenting and different different also civic engagement functionalities and and then we designed the model and I'm showing now this this is a model pretty much the model uh, the main model the generic model hasn't changed uh, that. Uh, we uh, uh, that each year citizens uh, submit ideas in first phase, which is the both uh, electronically, but also it is still possible to bring the piece of paper to the town hall at, at certain period. Uh, then next uh, phase is experts, outside experts, so not only city government experts analyzing those ideas. Ideas are grouped based on based on topic. And then there will be topical seminars organized. And it is very important that they are, of course, public events, uh, deliberations. Uh, nowadays, also on site events uh, after COVID. Uh, during COVID, they were, of course, only online. But it is also important to include, also to invite external experts like landscape architects and all there. And then there is a presentation of ideas, still also as, as a separate public event, but also online transferred. And then there is voting. What we learned after first pilot year already, and we added those elements, said now before public presentations or final list of ideas, we also organize training seminars, the orders of ideas on, on marketing, on introducing the ideas, and we also make sign kind of sign good good of good campaign with all orders of ideas we we also learned that th this is pretty much needed because to to have this proper proper campaign and to follow really good good campaign rules and um, and the each year in Tartu city two i two ideas uh, each for uh, 100,000 euros will be implemented by city. So this is uh, the main principle also that yes, ideas are coming from citizens, citizens discuss, get extra expertise and build, but then city is responsible and in charge of implementing them. So what we have received from this process, so I mean, we have learned of course a lot and, and I'm, uh, throughout all these times, I have really started to love. I, 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 there are some of my favorite ideas, and and it is funny that uh, that this is not about all about so about winning ideas, but there are just good ideas which are not winning first year. They are coming, keep coming back, and still influencing the process, influencing the, the general budget strategy. One of my favorite ideas is already to, I mean, many years ago already to transform this public space to 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 transform ugly uh, Soviet apartment, uh, Soviet style apartment houses to make kind of lively calories. And, and this to some extent is, it was not winning idea, but this to some extent has happened a lot in, in our public space in city anyway. So city has still already implemented this idea in many places. And, and the, it was also very encouraging from the very beginning, how, how the authors of, of the ideas started to promote the ideas, organizing light shows and so. And this was also very surprising that already many, many years ago when we started the process there were so many green ideas how to change those again ugly school houses to transform them in in, in vertical uh, green garden and gardens and so on uh, but 
general, to generalize what are the main results and lessons learned. This is here just a gallery of all the winning ideas, and I, I'm not going into this too much, but as you see, there are uh, I mentioned that we wanted to get so really out of box ideas. First years, I must say, the main ideas were very pragmatical, very practical. They were signaling very much the problems citizens had had faced and encountered in the cities that pavements needed to, to be transformed for being more bike friendly and so on. Uh, but but now I'm, co I'm I'm coming also in 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 a minute to to to, to where we are right now. One very important lesson learned is that we still need to keep both online and and and, and offline opportunities to participate. One thing is that we also bring the ideas physically to physic to, to public space when there is voting period. Really, we present in that two case, we present them on bridge, those ideas. Each of the ideas is nicely photographed and, and, and has additional text. And so citizens can really touch some the ideas better. And of course, we are using this online platform for, for everything, for submitting, for voting. But it is still very important to have those offline elements in this process as well. Well, the bigger, biggest impact is really that I'm not going into so much about how, how many how, how many more participants there are and how many more ideas there are, even if, if, if this has happened as well. But what I think in our case is what, what is even much more important, how much this process has influenced the general decision-making model in Tartu City and in many other places, so now it is almost a norm to start from, from crowdsourcing, from collecting ideas whenever, if it is, if, if, if any kind of detail planning or master plan is discussed, start to city starts from crowdsourcing ideas using interactive map solutions and then adding extra expertise, which is also published on online, but and then face-to-face uh, -face events are organized to discuss those ideas because I think this is the core essence of democracy. And only then there will be votings or whatever final decision-making process. So, and this I think has been direct influence of this participatory budgeting. And just few examples of winning proposals. What we now, uh, winning proposals uh, of last year or, or this year have been that finally we have now that one idea is out of box, uh, which is like um, skiing slope in, in the, basically in the middle of city center. And other winning idea is very pragmatical, as you see, new benches, more benches, hundreds of benches needed in, in city public space. And finally, challenges, what we still have and we are really struggling with is that, well, even if to the city it feels that everybody should know, at least in Tartu case, so almost, I mean, 10 years, uh, everybody should know already about process, but my, my message is that no, you, you, have to be, you have to be still much more smarter and, and more active in, in, in doing the campaign. It goes for orders, individual orders, but also as a city, you just need to invest resources in making this marketing and introducing the process, rules, and so on. Platforms, it's very important. I mean, we we have online platforms, but I would say, and I, I'm sure Robert will, will show you, <laughs> you his platforms, that, that I think Robert's platforms are, are better than platforms we are using currently, because platform, online platform is also very important. It needs to be very user-friendly, very, uh, very attractive also to attract citizens. And well, the biggest challenge probably is fatigue. I, I would say that we are implementing a participatory budgeting for 10 years in Tartu, and I see that citizens are, we need to find some, some new, new things, new elements, probably, I don't know, find, in experiment with 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 extra topic uh, topic uh, topical editions or something because citizens get 
a bit tired of this process. And, and well, finally, I'm, I'm just running a bit because I know we are, we are, <laughs> we have limited time. We are supporting uh, in, in, in our organization municipalities in any possible way. We just want to emphasize that this participatory budgeting cannot be, it's not definitely not enough. I mean, it should be municipalities need support and good examples uh, in a very much wider way. So it, it, it is just one way of creating dialogue, but but it is uh, as, as important is really to make other processes as transparent and possible and so on. And my, finally, my takeaways are really that, that sometimes external experts really, really help to, to, to show and design the, the, the process better because we really, we have proved uh, also our organization that, 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 that really we, we can be, neutral we can say things what are probably i mean if somebody comes out uh, from outside it's always always like 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 better better to follow for municipality and we encourage to start really small and but start now really to to experiment probably also to experiment with participatory budgeting in schools so which is also to attract young people and uh, and please combine online and offline tools because really the I think the combination makes it much more successful. And finally, engagement should be fun for all 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 all, all participants as, as as much as for the city. So and this process really enables to to have fun and and to experiment with different things every year. So thank you very much for your attention and, and I, I'm really looking forward to your questions. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Christina. It was a very good uh, summary and so many, so many good ideas. So, so my favorite that I wrote down is about the spillover effect that participatory budgeting has had on the decision-making. I think that's a wonderful take you have from this. And of course, many, many more and luckily you recorded your presentation so we can re-listen it again and again but yeah on the on the point that you were saying there are many there are better platforms that robert can tell about but also because i think iceland's example of starting participatory, participatory budgeting in the aftermath of the economic crisis of 2008 is very interesting and uh, we were also talking about your examples in the regional seminar so we have an introduction and you are like the frosting on the cake in terms of that, like you are bringing it all together and just putting all the dots in the right place. So, uh, Robert, the floor is yours to tell about more more about Iceland. Yeah, thank you so much. And uh, you know, let's let me first say it's just amazing to see all the evolution and all the new projects. You know, obviously your country, but actually across Europe and across the world, we've seen participatory budgeting and uh, a sort of digital democracy. Uh, uh, sort of move into uh, you know being more and more used, uh, which is great. I'm just going to share my screen, uh, uh, get my presentation going here. Um, so, uh, Citizens Foundation in Iceland, uh, Iceland has uh, uh, quite an old tradition of uh, of uh, sort of uh, democratic processes uh, with uh, one of the uh, you know uh, oldest uh, running parliament was founded in the year 930. Uh, so. Uh, uh, yeah, just 1100 years ago. And uh, about 100 years ago, Iceland had like democracy, you know, I mean, we had like, a, like a, uh, a, you know, even if we were a part of, sort of the Danish kingdom, we still had like uh, democracy where we could, uh, uh, you know, come and uh, we could vote uh, every four years. Uh, and, uh, and even, you know, people would come on their horses, you know, to the polling place, they could sort of wave to their uh, parliamentarians who are often walking by, uh, you know, looking for votes. And uh, then, uh, you know, the car becomes popular. We get the first computers in Iceland. We, we get connected to the internet. And uh, that's actually where I start my work as an entrepreneur. I, I started the first internet company in Iceland in 1993, connecting people to the internet, making websites and so on. But during this, all of those years of massive technological and society process, the democratic system had not evolved much, and uh, and then we had the financial crisis, and Iceland uh, uh, was hit really 
uh, sort of dramatically with the financial crisis because all of the bank, we had like three commercial bank, they all went bankrupt over a period of 10 days. And people were like going to the bank. I remember my grandfather called me, you know, he went to the bank, he was going to take out all his savings. He bought like a plastic bag with him for the money, but he couldn't, he only got a little bit of his money, uh, uh, you know, uh, there. And people were uh, um, thinking the ATM machines would stop. You know, it's just like, it was really looking for like, collapse of civilization in Iceland, at least a modern civilization. Thankfully, uh, you know, in the end, uh, pe people didn't lose all their money, but they took to the street and they took to the street uh, basically to uh, protest against bad decision making. You know, just how the government had uh, been promoting Iceland as sort of the financial center of the north. And it, the whole thing politically and business wise was built on uh, just sand. It was not real. And uh, and I was actually living in London at the time. I lived away from Iceland for 17 years. And uh, and we start to look at this idea on how we can use uh, uh, the internet uh, to sort of modernize uh, political processes and, and give citizens more oversight and more influence into decision-making. So in return, uh, to try not to replicate the financial crisis again. And, uh, and we're building uh, infrastructure, uh, digital infrastructure that government uh, can use to connect the citizens. And our mission is to improve decision making and accelerate innovation for a better world. So, you know, it's not about, um, you know, yes, it's partly about the right of the citizen to have their voice, but the ultimate goal is better decisions, you know, and to move uh, the political democratic system in, in more in step with uh, technology. Um, our platforms have been used in uh, 45 countries. We have a small uh, one person office in the United States now and work with City of Reykjavik, Scottish Parliament, the World Bank and many others. And we have, uh, and sort of our projects are uh, usually powered by two uh, open source uh, solution. We have a IG generation and the deliberation platform called Your Priorities. And then we have a uh, budget voting and sort of a civic education platform called Open Active Voting. And that's uh, those two platforms make up the, for example, in Iceland, in, uh, or at least in the you know, you know, large municipalities, those two solutions make up the, the uh, uh, sort of participatory budgeting solutions. Some smaller uh, municipalities only use the idea generation of policy deliberation platform because you can actually do voting there as well with electronic IDs. Uh, but uh, I will go over those two solutions quickly now. And uh, uh, your priorities. So that's uh, one of our open source platforms. And uh, uh, it's all about better decisions, building up trust. But also, uh, I spent 15 years in the video game industry, making uh, video games, online games, uh, mobile games. And uh, that's really what I come into this project for. So we learned quite uh, early on that, you know, platforms needed to be, uh, you know, fun and easy to use. So, you know, citizens were not, uh, I mean, they were more enticed to take part if the experience was entertaining and, uh, uh, but still uh, meaningful. Um, uh, millions of people have used the, pro the platform. Uh, it's, it's quite simple, the core mechanics of it is that uh, citizens have ideas and then there are debate points for and against, and then they can sort of uh, like and dislike, uh, you know, different ideas and, and search through them and so on. But uh, one of the, uh, uh, you know, most difficult things we faced early on is that uh, in 2009, we uh, launched a pilot project uh, called Shadow Parliament, where we got a small grant from the Icelandic Parliament, uh, and we built a website for uh, that, was, that took lo uh, laws that were for discussion in the Parliament and gave uh, citizens an opportunity to comment on the laws. And uh, just in the first evening, uh, when we uh, uh, had launched the platform, um, you know, we had hundreds of people, you know, participating there and, and we had this horrible personal argument. We had two or three people who were like, well, calling each other names. It was like horrible. And uh, me and uh, Gunnar, who was my sort of main, you know, co-founder, we looked at each other and thought, oh, great. We've created one more place on the internet for people to argue. 
So obviously that was not our intention. So uh, since 2009, we've been uh, working on this uh, deliberation, this debating system that basically makes it uh, uh, difficult to argue. It encourages uh, uh, you know, rational thought. It nudges citizens into evaluation, but also it gives the minority and majority views equal weight, which, which sort of helps to facilitate consensus in some cases. So, so, so this is an example. This is actually uh, from a crowdsourcing project about uh, the education policy of the city of Reykjavik in 2018. And, uh, and somebody had put in this idea about uh, bringing back the New Testament uh, as a sort of required reading in the schools in Iceland. And obviously, Iceland has uh, um, uh, freedom of religion laws and so on. So, so this was a very controversial idea. But here you can see the interface. The idea is at the top. But then uh, the citizens can put points for and points against, uh, you know, on each side, and uh, and we had hundreds of people uh, participate in this debate. We did not have to delete a single comment, and actually, it's quite an informed debate about uh, quite a controversial subject. And and the good thing is that uh, because of the design of the deliberation, you know, people who were for it and against it. They actually can uh, are sort of we force them to read each other comments because even on mobile you uh, have the points for and against interleaved so you have point for point against point for point against and so on so it really brings together the two sides uh, quite uh, quite nicely and uh, we have a lot of artificial intelligence in your priorities we have like machine translation so people can speak uh, together in different languages really good here and we, we developed this here in Iceland as a response to uh, the tourism uh, boom in Iceland because we have so many tens of thousands now live in, in Reykjavik that don't speak any Icelandic and uh, are, are just here even temporarily for a few years you know working in the tourism industry so but the city wants them to be able to participate in democracy so they can do that through artificial intelligence People can also speak in their ideas where that's then automatically converted to text. And if you have hundreds or thousands of ideas that uh, the citizens are swiping through on their mobiles, we have this recommendation system. So if you have participated before, then uh, you know it's uh, more likely you will get ideas uh, you know, early in the list that you are interested in. And we have automatic toxicity detection and a lot of analytics, of, uh, analytics tools with AI, like for example, to cluster together automatically uh, similar ideas and in, in like in um, the PP project in Reykjavik where we have now for many years had over over thousand ideas it was a record 1700 ideas uh, last year and the key outcome uh, of uh, using your priorities uh, you know through those sort of processes is uh, basically improved uh, you know communities and in the case of PP to reach out to a lot of people and uh, uh, this is an old map of some of our old projects, uh, including we, we, we helped uh, with the People's Assembly, Rava Kuku in 2012-2013 in, uh, in, in Estonia, and with our projects all over the projects all over the world and uh, worked with uh, many, uh, many uh, partners. But our main sort of, uh, uh, our sort of flagship project, if you like, uh, which is better Reykjavik was opened in uh, which we opened a week before the city election in 2010 and we offered all the political parties that were running for the election sort of a space on the website and uh, um, a lot of people participated over 40 percent of the people in the city and um, you know we had uh, actually uh, you know in 2010 the Facebook advertisement system opened in Iceland just like a few weeks before we started this project. So we used that to advertise a better Reykjavik and we, we paid like, you know, you know, half a cent or one cent for every click. So even if we didn't have a lot of money, we, we managed to reach, uh, you know, or, or, you know, a lot of the you know, population in Iceland through uh, those Facebook ads. And the project became very popular. And uh, the, one of the parties running for the election, the best party, which was sort of, uh, um, you know, as artists, uh, old punk rockers, and so on, it was uh, and led by Iceland's most uh, loved comedian, Jon Gnar, and uh, and they basically jumped on it, and they because they uh, were a sort of a protest party, they wanted a new type of politics, so they jumped on it, and they basically told everybody, come to Better Reykjavik, help us make policy, and then they ended up uh, winning the election, and uh, and the uh, Better Reykjavik platform became a part of the 
as a collaboration between Citizens Foundation and the city of Reykjavik and the Better Reykjavik, Better Reykjavik became a part of the city website. And uh, Better Reykjavik has all sorts of different projects. It has participatory budgeting running since 2011, and but also all sorts of different policy crowdsourcing. Anything small and big, a policy, this, a, it was like a renovation uh, from this screenshot from uh, one of the biggest swimming pools, and then people are consulted on, on that. Um, you know, we're doing a really exciting project uh, next month with uh, this, the 50th anniversary of the uh, Reykjavik Art Museum. So uh, on Better Reykjavik, we'll have a project where people will be able to, uh, um, you know, open the art museum archives and vote on the art they would like to see in an exhibition. And then the top voted uh, uh, art uh, pieces will be uh, put on an actual uh, real live exhibition in the Reykjavik Art Museum in, 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 um, later this year. So, so if you're around, uh, around uh, Iceland in the autumn or winter, uh, then you'll be able to see a crowdsourced uh, art uh, or crowd curated art uh, uh, exhibition. And uh, uh, yeah, oh, sorry, this was the sort of the English translation here. <laughs> I should have left it on this page. But uh, but to PP specifically, this is the uh, My Neighborhood Project. And, uh, and that's been going, as I said, from 2011. Uh, this is a screenshot from uh, 2020, 2021, where we have 1300 ideas. Uh, that were submitted, but actually uh, last year, I need to update the screenshot, we had 1,700 ideas that people added. So, um, and the key to this success is a very significant advertisement campaign and the marketing campaign where uh, the city, uh, it, it's cost probably, uh, you know, you know, it's cost some 100, 200,000 euros at least, and they have, uh, you know, TV ads, they have uh, influencers, you know, they really reach like a huge part of the population uh, through those. And and even if the project has been going so long, um, this very much uh, focus on letting all the citizens know about the project, that keeps it fresh, you know, we see no, you know, uh, um, in sort of mention of people are getting tired of it or something. Maybe some people get tired one year, but because we're reaching so many people, then, uh, then, uh, 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 you know, there's always, you know, new people every year and then people who participated two years ago, they come back and so on and so on. And I, I really like this. This is sort of a map of, um, you know, where the ideas are. And for many years now, uh, what I like about this map, so every little uh, uh, dot is, is, is an idea that uh, like, uh, like somebody has submitted. But what I like about this map is that it, it draws out the outlines of the municipality. So, so where you see the dots, that's Reykjavik. You know, the citizens have drawn a map of the boundaries of the city, of their city, with ideas. And so there's ideas everywhere. And, and uh, it's really sort of encouraging, uh, you know, to see. And uh, as we've seen in all the presentations and with uh, uh, Christina as well, uh, you know, I mean, there, there's a lot of, uh, you know, playgrounds, this practical thing, basketballs, you know, pump trucks things to do with the swimming pools and so on. So uh, um, there's a wide variety of, of projects. And the city has had sort of a bit of themes sometimes, uh, like 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 uh, a couple of years ago, they had like a, a smart city theme. So they, in their advertisement campaign, uh, they uh, sort of promoted that as low sort of. And last year, they were really calling out sort of for innovative ideas. So like the influencers and so on who are doing the advertisements, you know, like they were really sort of highlighting like ideas that could be like cool and like unique. And I think that also fights sort of the fatigue that, uh, you know, Christina was talking about, uh, which, which, is, which is actually totally a real thing. You know, if you do the same sort of process over and over again, the same way, it, 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 it can become like a bit sort of bureaucratic, I guess, for people taking part. And, uh, and uh, so, yeah. And uh, and it, it, it spread all over Iceland. We work with 18 municipalities, uh, 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 you know, around Iceland. And actually, you know, probably around 80 to 90 percent of the population in Iceland has access to uh, citizen engagement, uh, participatory budgeting, and, and other projects through uh, through our sort of open solutions. So this is our Better Iceland website, which, uh, which, uh, yeah, and. Uh, uh, we have uh, only a few minutes uh, left, so so I'm gonna um, I'll I'll go through this quickly. 
Uh, City of Vienna contacted us a couple of years ago. They said like, oh, we will not do like the My Neighborhood type of a project, but only for young people. So, so they did the project <coughs> using both our, your priorities and open active voting uh, for kids from five to uh, 20. And, <coughs> excuse me, and, and kids from five to 13, they didn't participate online. They participated through a card game, which is there, there's a, a screenshot of the card game here on the, on the left. And <coughs> here are just some more uh, things that the young people added. And uh, it was fun, you know, because like, and, and so many interesting ideas, even like ideas from the kindergarten or like from the first year of school kids from like five, six year olds. It was, it was quite interesting and fun, a fun lots of event. And, uh, and just a little bit on open active voting. This is our sort of budget, gamified budget voting uh, platform. So here, for example, better Reykjavik, you, you come in, you, you choose your neighborhood, and then you have all the ideas that uh, are up for the vote, and then you see how much they cost. And the, at the top of the screen, you have the whole budget for this neighborhood. So you're really the mayor and you're in control. So what would you, how would you, uh, you know, get the budget together? Which ideas would you combine to for the, for your fantasy perfect budget? And then people can put like a star on their most favorite one. Then it gets two votes. And then people just fill out uh, their favorite projects. So at the top of the screen, they're all filled out now. And uh, uh, and yeah, and people have a lot of fun with this. And it works great on mobile as well. And we're getting uh, like uh, over twenty percent participation rate um, in the final voting. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, we're really happy about that. Um, you know, citizens submit their ideas, the cost is evaluated, citizens vote on ideas, the city executes them, the citizens use the result. I'm sure you've seen this in the other presentations, Christine also talked about similar process. And it has really a positive impact on the city and the participation uh, keeps on growing, at least uh, for the past seven years. So we're quite happy, happy about that. We are getting close to 20% in Reykjavik. We are over 20% in the smaller municipalities around Reykjavik. And, uh, you know, here are some of the ideas that uh, are, uh, um, you know, coming out of the process. Uh, and we've also done a PP projects, uh, you know, around the, or our platforms, open source platforms have been used in, in projects around the world. We've consulted, for example, on Decide Madrid in, 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 in Spain, which was sort of basically we we helped them build uh, the better Reykjavik process, rebuild it in Madrid using their solutions. And that was a lot of fun. And uh, what have we learned? Participation must be fun. That's really like, uh, that's not only because I come from the video game industry originally, I mean, it's just the really we have hard facts on that. If, uh, you know, just, uh, you know, uh, this, the process needs to be fun and interesting to take part in, and uh, otherwise uh, people will get bored and they, yeah, they won't participate. And obviously you need to reward citizens, and then the participatory budgeting projects are great for that because you can actually build something concrete. But the key challenge is communication. How do you let everybody in your city or town know about this opportunity to participate? And I mean, if, if you have like, like, like some of the municipalities in Iceland only have a thousand people, if you have a thousand people in a municipality, it's very easy really to let everybody know about something that's going on. But as soon as you have, you know, tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands, then it, communication becomes, becomes such a challenge because the attention economy is, is, uh, is really hard to navigate, you know? And if you put something on your Facebook page or Twitter page, very few people will see it really. Unfortunately, it's, 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 it's pretty sad. And, uh, and, uh, and final slide, uh, is that we really believe in that uh, the the future of democracy, the future of digital democracy, it should be something that sort of the citizens and civil society organizations working with governments uh, on those solutions, rather than governments working uh, directly with the tech uh, companies or the tech giants to provide the democracy. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. It was very inspiring. And even though I had read both of your presentations, it was so interesting to hear you tell them. It felt very inspiring. And on, on the note of inspiration and the nudging, we have one question from the audience, and I'm going to try to understand it correctly. But how do you nudge people? How do you nudge people to apply? I think it, it goes both ways. So one in a part, you answered it's a very good uh, ad campaign. It's important to do a PR, and Riga Municipality also talked about that. The bigger success they had this year is mainly due to a good PR and ad campaign. But maybe both of you can briefly comment on how 
the municipality is not able to do anything in this regard. You want to start, Christina? Yes, I can. Well, I have actually just quite recent uh, experience from my municipality. I mentioned that I, I, I do many things in this municipality where I'm living in. And because they also, I mean, that as municipality administration was pretty sure that every single person living in municipality already knows what participatory budgeting is and how it one functions. Then I proposed to make a study, a really very easy thing online questionnaire, but also we distributed it on paper. And it came out that so many people have heard something, say didn't have a clue how it works. And so so I could I could show on paper and on screen to the municipality that look, you need to do something. And what we came out with was that just we understood that it works so much better than actually citizen to citizen. Uh, advertises this process. So we collected those orders, most of all, who had already behind winning ideas of previous years. And they and we we filmed and we made we prepared with municipality videos, we proposed them to make videos. So they said that how they came to the idea, how they collected support to their idea. And how wonderful! And they, they, those videos were filmed in the places where these ideas had been realized and implemented already. So they showed also on those videos how wonderful new things have been. So and also they explained the process. So it was just very quite easy, actually quite cheap because those videos were done with mobile phones. And and we had actually this. This simple, these simple steps proved to be very efficient. Next year, we had already so many, so many more participants in my municipality. So, just one example of nudging. Yeah, uh, yeah, absolutely. Everything that Christina said, and 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 I think that uh, uh, you know, as you mentioned, you know, the, obviously it's it's important uh, the ad attachment campaign in terms of uh, uh, you know just physically reaching citizens so that in the first place that they know about it i mean nothing happens if they don't know about it that's like the first first sort of barrier and but then obviously the framing it needs to be uh you know if it's uh, you don't really nudge people to do something if it if it feels too sort of bureaucratic you know in terms of like uh it's your duty or something like you know rather you know to try to keep it a bit sort of fresh and you know and like for example the uh the uh, the campaign for better Reykjavik uh for you know you know last year's pp where we have 1700 this year was be the hero of the neighborhood that was the that was the nudge be the hero you know and come up with this great idea that like you know and there was this advertisement campaign and like there were you know people in like uh a, a uh yeah anyway and, and uh, it was really cool actually and uh, so that's one thing and uh, then uh, uh, then it comes to the, sort of the platform as we talked about that like uh, everybody well everybody 80 percent uses mo use mobiles so like like the screenshot I showed was like from the desktop version which very few people use actually you know it's all about the mobile experience so it needs to be simple it needs to be like you know and for example in your priorities in our platform when you write the description of a project you can only write 300 characters, you know. So when you go are scrolling down, and same if you add an idea, you're only very limited to what you can put in the initial description. I mean, you can put help pages that have endless amount of, you know, information and people and and there is a lot of information there. So, but it needs to be sort of you know simple, uh, you know, and, and then also uh, uh, as I said, we had 70,000 people visited the platform. Uh, the, the PP uh, last year in a, in a city of 130, 135,000. And 75% of those visits came through all the people sharing their own ideas on social media. So, so somebody comes in and they put in an idea, you know, they put in a nice image, we encourage them to do, put a nice image or they put in a video or they, they can record it right there. And then we encourage them to share it on social media. And so 25% of the people uh, last year, PP, they visited uh, through the advertisement campaign directly, but 75% visited 
through their friends, their family, their co-workers, sharing their ideas on social media. And this is a cycle uh, of, uh, of uh, 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 and just really quickly, because I had actually, and if you get a copy of the presentation, you, you will be able to uh, 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 you know, see this presentation. We, we call this the citizen attention model, where we have uh, governments, uh, you know, do uh, uh, campaigns on social media, Instagram, and TikTok. TikTok is a really important platform today if you want to be cool and reach young people. Um, and you get ad impressions to the citizens, and the citizens add ideas, and then uh, they uh, share uh, share their, uh, 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 you know, then they start to share, and then you have this cycle of where citizens are sharing uh, the uh, uh, they're sharing between themselves, and, and that's really a, that's the best nuts, you know, sort of peer, you know, encouragement, if you like. Sorry for a long answer. No, I mean it was perfect answer. <laughs> no apologies needed. I wanted to summarize what we discussed and what was said during these presentations, and correct me if you want to add something. But first of all, uh, people are really uh, in the comments happy with what you, Christina, said. Uh, start small, but start now. And I think it really well applies that you don't have to spend necessarily like five years on planning how you're going to start. And as we saw in Latvia every year, the the rule book is kind of rewritten and you learn each year and you change it. So that's a very good, uh, that, that's not necessarily a slogan, but idea that we're going to live with. Uh, participatory budgeting must be fun. And I think that's a very important thing to keep in mind for us, but also for like city planners and uh, municipalities. Um, be hero of neighborhood. We are not going to steal it, but we might get very inspired by this, <laughs> Robert. So thank you for saying that. And uh, I think it's very important to know that people will be drivers of TV popularity. What we saw in Latvia, that small municipalities have higher attendance and like participation rate because of connection, I think they have, and because they are able to connect quicker and more actively. There was one municipality that had almost 30% participation rate on participants, which is like grand, it's grand, it's very much. And yeah, that's something to keep in mind for the upcoming years when we go forward. So on this note, I want to say that I have many questions. I know people have many questions, but from the time we took away from everyone, we have an amazing last panel where Latvia's NGOs will tell how they have been involving youth and kids in schools and how municipalities are planning to approach the youngest generation. And I think it's a very important point that you raised, but that's where we need to start. So thank you very much. It's always very nice to meet you and speak with you. I hope that the balcony is still there, Christina, <laughs> and that uh, you have a nice day and nice weekend. And we hope to see and meet you very soon in any other setting. Thank you, thank you for so having, thank you, thank you for having me. Bye-bye.